My friends, my work in New Zealand covers a whole range of environmental issues. One of the issues that we are dealing with at the moment is the question of whether we can get the principle of sustainable management of natural and physical resources, including preservation, embodied in one of the major pieces of law, and that's a major problem for us at the moment. Another area I've been working on is mining, particularly the toxic effects of gold and silver mining. So when a Dwayne Silverstein of the Goldman Foundation <laughs> telephoned me at a bleary 6 a.m. in the morning. I really didn't know what I had struck. <laughs> but I do thank the Goldmans and the Goldman Foundation team. And inevitably, this is a, a grassroots award. The many people who work for the environment, who work for the Antarctic, and the members of the Antarctic and Southern Ocean Coalition who are here, my colleagues in New Zealand and around the world. I'm very grateful, very honoured. What we're looking at here at the moment is the future of Antarctica, but also the future of mankind, humankind. My word. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> humankind, the other species on this planet and the planet itself. The Antarctic is a cameo of the choices that face us for people, for relations between species and between nations. It symbolizes the choices that we have about energy and our use of it. We have the choice to conserve now rather than to drink drill and dig the last near pristine wilderness on Earth. Antarctica's real treasures are not the oil that might be under the ice, but its wilderness and aesthetic values. Antarctica is the kitchen of global weather and its ocean systems. It's a baseline for monitoring pollution. It's a symbol of human forbearance towards the environment. The timing of this award is enormously significant because today, on Earth Day, a meeting of the Antarctic Treaty countries opened in Madrid. And the Antarctic Treaty nations are today settling down to a meeting where they are going to decide the future of Antarctica, whether to agree to have a permanent prohibition of mining embodied in a comprehensive environmental protection instrument. And at this point, I have to show my true campaign colors and ask you for help, for urgent help, for any of you who have influence with a small group of countries who stand between Antarctica and permanent protection. And I regret deeply on this soil to record that it's the United States and the UK who stand between Antarctica and permanent protection. You may know that the United States Congress has already passed law for the indefinite protection of Antarctica. And I have here two letters from the Congress and from the Senate to President Bush asking him to ensure that the US delegation has instructions that would mean that the United States delegation to this Madrid meeting supported permanent protection for Antarctica. It is to the deep disappointment of environmentalists everywhere that today the United States announced that its policy was just for 20 to 40 years protection of Antarctica, followed by a formula that would almost certainly mean that Antarctica was open for mining. Indefinite to some US agencies means five years protection. I would ask any of you who have influence with the United States government or the UK government to write to your, re to your leaders now to urge them this week to change that policy. And I'm sure there are many people in this hall 
who have exactly that influence. And if you chose to exercise it, you could help that great white continent to the south. It's not just a danger to the environment, and we know all about that from the Exxon Valdez experience, but it's a danger to the peace of the whole southern zone if there's resource rivalry allowed in that pristine wilderness. Please give us some help, and thanks very much for this award.